Hey, welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. My name is Kevin Davani. I'm the Total Connector. I'm really looking forward to my next talk interview with Mark J. Valick uh, from Incrementum. He's a wealth portfolio asset manager in gold and Bitcoin. You know, he's not one of those anti Bitcoiners or, or, or you know, one of those uh, uh, Peter Schiff guys. So I really, uh, uh, you know, respect and, and really appreciate his sharing his knowledge. He was on the Valley of Bitcoin Symposium in Vienna on March 5th, where he gave a presentation. Uh, the video is already online, so I'm going to put those in the show notes. And, you know, I, was, I, was, um, I want to have his perspectives, his, his, uh, his thoughts, his opinions, his, uh, you know, his vision. Um, and what does he mean with you know rebalancing um, Bitcoin and gold? Because uh, it's one of his strategies, uh, portfolio uh, management, uh, you know, asset management uh, strategies. So there's going to be a bunch of topics we're going to talk about. Really looking forward to that. Let me know what you think afterwards. Let me know your questions. And I uh, hope you're going to love this. Without further ado, this is my interview, my talk with Mark J. Valik. Mark Valik, thank you so much for your time coming my show to the Total Bitcoin Basket Show. How are you doing? Hi, Gavon. I'm great. Thanks. How about you? Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Under these circumstances, um, I wish I would have, you know, met you in person, uh, do this face to face because also of the sound quality, uh, you know, with with professional equipment. But, you know, that's the way it is. But uh, hopefully we can make this up for next time. Um, I really enjoyed your presentation, by the way, uh, on March 5th at the Value of Bitcoin Symposium in Vienna. Thank you. A lot of succinct knowledge and uh, also enjoyed our panel discussion. Um, Mark, you, I've been following you for some, quite some time and you, know, you, um, you have a really comprehensive knowledge uh, on both, uh, you know, in both areas of gold and Bitcoin. Um, why don't you just, you know, for my listeners, uh, give a, maybe a, a brief introduction. What's your background? What's your path to gold? What's your path to Bitcoin? Yeah, happy to do that. So um, I um, have the background of being a fund manager. So I was, was actually uh, pretty early on interested in finance. Um, studied uh, business administration in Vienna. Um, always had uh, the, the goal to, to work in the finance sector and actually did that already during, during my time at the university um, and uh, found out that the most interesting part within finance, for me at least, was asset management. Um, I had a small uh, stop at uh, private banking, that was interesting too, but as I said, to me, more interesting than or say investment banking, for instance, to me was was asset management, allocation of capital, and um, so I, I landed up there in, in in Vienna, becoming a fund manager eventually, uh, and uh, really enjoyed the job. Actually, also uh, was quite um, enthusiastic, uh, still are, but uh, I, I did have some kind of a revelation actually. Um, in the mid end 2000s, um, more or less coinciding t uh, with with the financial uh, crisis, but actually it started a little bit earlier than that already, because um, after I had finished the studies, uh, I, I only um, discovered the Austrian School of Economics, which I hadn't heard about or during my studies, even though ironically I was studying in Vienna. So um, that, that, that was really a big, big turning point for me personally, um, because I, I completely fell in love with this and, and, and it was a complete eye opener for me. And I, I, I really dug into the monetary history and uh, monetary theory and uh, took a lot of courses in this regard and did some uh, intense reading and uh, ended up even writing a book a little bit later on, uh, which is available in, in a few languages by now. It's called um, Austrian School for Investors. Um, so, yeah, and, and, and with this kind of new revelation, uh, also my, my view, my worldview on, on the whole industry changed a little bit because I also became aware that kind of um, as part of the traditional financial industry i was kind of a beneficiary of what i think is a, a very unfair financial system 
um, you, you know, the, the Cantio effect, which is basically uh, some uh, wealth, uh, a severe wealth transfer, which is going on. And, 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 and I actually had to ask myself the question, do, do I want to stay part of this, this, this traditional um, banking sector or, or do I want to kind of change my, my, my route completely, do something else um, in a different sector? But, but, but then um, things happened. Uh, I had a, a good constellation of, of people. I found similar thinking people already. I had known them partly. Um, and, and we ended up founding our own uh, investment boutique, which is called Incrementum. Uh, so that, has, uh, that was seven years ago. And, and we want to actually apply the Austrian School of Economics within uh, investing. So, so that's what, what we are doing, basically. Uh, we are investing uh, for, for, for clients and uh, having in mind that the uh, monetary system is, is not sustainable as it is right now. And, and therefore, we are trying to, to um, figure out sensible investment strategies and, 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 and use this to our advantage. But also, what we also do is we are um, very uh, focused on the educational side. We write uh, um, a, a report which is well, well read. It's called the Gopi Trust Report. And it's a big, uh, big publication about the gold market. It's an annual publication and it's coming up again in, in May 27th. Um, so yeah, working hard already on, on that one. Now that's in a nutshell what I do. That's fascinating. Yeah. You mentioned, yeah, like I, it's so remarkable. I hear that from so many uh, people who, who studied economics. I mean, I didn't study economics. I studied law in Vienna, but um, uh, it's very, you know, interesting that so many people tell me, or, you know, it's just, it's just uh, common knowledge. You know, that it, it's not a standard uh, uh, knowledge that uh, you get uh, in regards to Austrian economics. Like, like, you know, you don't even learn about, let's say maybe here and there, you know, some people tell me, you know, they've heard of Hayek or, right. you know, but, but that's not uh, part of the curriculum, right? And, not at all, and that's also that was also really to me fascinating within still kind of the traditional asset management scene when I already had learned about all this. I was actually um, doing um, fund selection also, so I was managing a fund of hedge fund, and I was able to to talk to very interesting people on on, on that uh, with 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 this job, and I asked them a lot of times what is their framework and so on. And if they perhaps know, what do they think about the Austrian school? And similar to what you just said, uh, my experience was oftentimes they said, yes, of course I know what it is. Uh, but then if you dug, dug a little bit deeper, you really, you really saw that, that they actually didn't have a huge uh, knowledge about it, at least not many. Some of them do, but, but, but not many. I mean, granted, not every hedge fund manager or not every fund manager has to have this knowledge because it depends on your strategy. I don't know if you do some kind of a arbitrage strategy or so, it probably isn't even a huge benefit for you. But but say for instance, macro funds, I would I would actually have expected that, that these people are, are pretty firm in, 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 in that school of thinking. And as I said, some of them are, but 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 it's it's really a, a, a small minority. Although I have to say, I think this this amount of um, people who, who do know this um, school of thought now ha has increased also within the financial sector. So that's, I think, a good thing. But it's it's strongly debated and it's 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 very emotional. So um, I, I had a, a, a small debate on, on, on Twitter recently with, with a former colleague of mine who's, who's kind of in the traditional mindset. And it's, it's, it's really completely a parallel universe. So it's, it's, it's difficult to, to actually communicate with these people because they, they are so convinced that the system is, is the only thing what is possible and that this is actually good and everything is under control and so on. So it's, it's, it's from times difficult, but I, but I think um, there is a big, big hunger out there to, 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 to see a different perspective and we are trying to deliver that. Mm -hmm. So, so would you, is it would it be correct to say that uh, because maybe also of the 
um, you know, the crisis that we have and, uh, you know, the quantitative easing, the, the, the inflationary or even hyperinflationary tendencies, uh, uh, more and more traditional minded people are now open to the comprehension of knowledge or principles of, uh, you know, of sound money. Uh, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, the Austrian school did get a big boost after, after 2008. So that was, I think, one one start of hopefully kind of um, a renaissance of the Austrian school. And, 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 and I've also been talking within the community um, and, and oftentimes there this the, the thought is going around and I think it's a very valid thought uh, that kind of with the next crisis, this will increase again, you know. I mean, actually, uh, Ludwig von Mies has said uh, it's, it's ideas that matters, uh, that matter. And, and, and these ideas, uh, also thanks to the internet, uh, are spreading and, and, and can spread. And then, obviously, what also uh, gave the Austrian school additional boost, I think, is, is the upcoming of Bitcoin at the end of the day. Because Bitcoin, I think, is something very uh, well-founded in, 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 in Austrian tradition even the ecb said in a working paper that it's probably kind of based on the ideas of hayek so so that that was quite interesting i thought mm -hmm. um, so 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 there and that's also something I, I i am very enthusiastic about that through this crypto and mainly bitcoin community a, a whole new young generation is 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 um, made aware of this old tradition old school and, and so, yes, I think it is it's growing steadily and it will thrive if, if, if things get worse, ironically. Yeah. Um, well, Mark, uh, let's talk about gold. I want to know your, um, your thoughts, perspective. What is gold to most people? Is it a hedge? Is it a, you know, a sort of a, a safe, what do you call it, a safe haven asset? Or what is it to most people? What is it? It is often referred to as a safe haven asset, and to some extent, I probably would agree too. But I think it's 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 perhaps not that shouldn't be perhaps the first thing with what one should associate gold. Um, so, um, what I like to point out about gold, and we we also um, give some some talks and also courses about about that. What I try to always deliver in these courses is, 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 is one very simple point that uh, gold is, is basically um, the, 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 the interesting thing about gold from an investment point of view is it, it, it is, is, it's not an in, in, in interest bearing asset, but it is uh, an inflation hedge in terms of it, uh, it cannot be uh, inflated. You know, it can't, you can't, if you hold gold, you can be very certain that your gold holdings are not diluted by, by a central bank. That doesn't mean, though, that, that it basically exhibits huge correlation with, with, with uh, the entrance of, of price inflation. I mean, it does to some extent, but, but it's, it's, it, oftentimes people say, just recently I read Goldman Sachs came out, with with a critique on gold, saying no, it's not an inflation hedge, and and they are right to some extent. If if you do like a typical regression or something like that, it's probably difficult to find find a very high uh, uh, correlation coefficient uh, if if you do some some statistical anal analysis. But this inflation hedge uh, only works in, in in the longer term. And, and, and gold, the price of gold actually rises with the amount of fiat money, which is permanently actually em emitted in, into the system. So I think one should view it like that. And, and just to, to finish up the, the thought, which I always try to uh, deliver is um, gold is interesting and uh, exceptional, uh, because not, uh, and valuable also, not, not so much because it's so scarce, Yes, it is scarce, obviously, but but there are uh, different commodities which which are way more scarce. So so just from from the absolute of amount of, of, of gold, it's it's not like anything close to to the, to the scarcest commodity uh, commodity available. But the the uh, available amount is the most constant. So 
uh, the, the the gold which is uh, available above ground has been hoarded since since the beginning of mankind, and so uh, it has this uh, uh, characteristic that it has a very high stock to flow ratio. The concept which which you and your listeners probably know very very well. Um, so it has a very high stock above ground stock and a very low flow. So uh, every year it, it, it is only inflated by 1.5% on a very constant basis. And, and this figure 1.5% doesn't change uh, a lot regardless of the price because, because mining, you can't really increase mining drastically. Um, so, and even if it, even if it's a doubled, which would be really hard to, to achieve, um, from a physical point of view, uh, but even if, say, you could double the amount of, of, of um, gold which you mine in, 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 in a given year, then you still would only have a 3% inflation. And, and so, so, so you still are very, uh, you can be very sure as holder of gold that, that, that your gold will not be diluted. And that's why it's, it's so valuable. And that's why it's also interesting as, as money. It's a very constant yardstick. Mm -hmm. Let me let me ask you. Uh, so when you say uh, the scarcity, um, when you talk about the scarcity of gold, or I would call it, I mean, I call it relative scarcity. But is it? Um, first of all, let me let me let me ask you this first. Uh, you wrote something, or in your argument, uh, in during the present, I don't somewhere you, or maybe it was on Twitter, you you posted. You said because of the non-monetary uh, properties uh, um, of of gold. It is more stable, or it can, you know, it can be considered more as a as a more stable uh, uh, store of value, because um, there's you know different opinions like should should um you know a, a money have would it be the best? I'm not sure what what Austrian economists think about it, like Hayek or whatever. But uh, does it make a difference if it has non-monetary? properties too or or use cases i'm sorry use cases such as you know industrial and um, jewelry and stuff yeah this goes to the the heart of one very vivid um discussion which is going on between say the gold camp and the and for instance the bitcoin camp um does it does does some money need um uh and an, 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 need to have and that's also a difficult and uh, very problematic actually term intrinsic value does it need to have some intrinsic value uh, i i think it's, it's it would be better described as as utility so what you said does it does it need to have some non-monetary value or utility to 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 be able to ascend to money and and, and oftentimes mises here is is referenced with his uh, regression theorem he said basically, well, yes, actually, historically, it was like that, 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 that he was referring, obviously, to precious metals, that, that, that commodities ascended to, mon to money, um, but the, 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 they had to have some kind of a non-monetary uh, value in order to, 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 to become, for instance, luxurious and so on. And this in order to have a constant demand for, for, for this co commodity. And, and the other side, the, mostly the Bitcoin side says, no, that, that, that's, that's not necessarily uh, the case. Um, uh, so, so there's a, a fierce debate going on. Um, and, 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 and some of the traditional Austrians, I think very dogmatically stuck to the argument of, of Mises and said, well, no, Bitcoin, can doesn't have uh, a non-monetary use and therefore it can never ascend to money. I think actually personally one 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 can consolidate actually both both views. Um, uh, if one basically makes the argument, which is also very sound, I think that Bitcoin has ha, has value. It doesn't have a physical properties obviously, but it has value in it of itself, so that it can that that you can actually um, send information uh, to to somebody else, and and you can be very certain that that it's not double spent and all this. So th this is kind of the intrinsic value of, of of Bitcoin. And and if you take this as 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 intrinsic value, I think you can even 
um, basically make the argument um, in, in alignment with, with Mises that it can ascend to, to money. But that's, that's a little bit of an academic uh, question. Um, I try, since I'm kind of a practice, practitioner here, more in the asset management uh, sphere, I, I try not to be so dogmatic uh, about these things, especially now, I think at this stage, Bitcoin has already proven uh, that it has monetary characteristics, at least. Um, and also, perhaps just to, to mention another Austrian here in this, uh, in, in this regard, Hayek actually said m money, money should be more an adjective. So, so it's, it, it's, it's like kind of moneyness. You can have things which are, are, are more, have more moneyness or less moneyness, but it, it's not like kind of binary. And if you, if, you, if you take this as a thought, I think that's quite a good starting point. You have things which are more money or less money or, 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 or no money at all, have no monetary properties at all. So, mm -hmm. so, so, so these are some thoughts, I think, which are quite interesting. Yeah, fascinating. Uh, so Mark, uh, let's go back to the topic of scarcity because I've never uh, really wrapped my head around this. So let's just go through some, uh, you know, some hardcore facts, you know, that you also uh, stated in your presentation. You, you said there are approximately 200,000 tons of stocks of gold, right? Uh, and the, what, the flow or what would you call the inflation rate of, of gold? It's yeah, I, I say so. Yeah, I mean it's it's confusing if you have a, a traditional uh, inflation rate in the mind, but as an Austrian, you actually mean the monetary inflation by mm -hmm. inflation rate. So yeah, so it's, you can also say the growth of, of the stock. If that's yeah, more. so you mentioned previously, you just said that it would be possible, like if we really, like if 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 um, the, the let's say the the miners, the gold miners, w wanted to pull all the resources together, you know, put also energy resources, technological innovation, may maybe, could they uh, easily, or would it be really difficult to double, let's say, you know, the the production? Uh, ext extremely difficult, and you can actually also again look back to history. Um, I mean, we had a huge gold bull market in, in the 2000s where, where the gold price basically um, went from $250 to uh, almost 2000 So it almost went 10x within a decade, which obviously became a huge incentive to increase the gold, the, the, the gold mining activities. And, and, and it did make more more initially more unprofitable mines are profitable and viable and 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 and, and uh, miners and entrepreneurs started up digging digging gold out again where, where they previously stopped doing it or, or, or found new ways and so on but even this factor 10x did, didn't didn't bring them uh, bring bring the gold inflation rate uh, up significantly in fact it didn't bring it up at all the thing is you can't you can't really start up a mine like this so you you really need it really needs time you need to to, to do the exploring and so on so so that's also kind of uh, a, a protection for for you as holder of gold that that the gold uh, supply cannot be increased uh, rapidly I mean, there are always then some, some, in my view, more or less ridiculous arguments from, from gold haters. Uh, one of them is, well, we've got these, these asteroids coming and, and in, in, within the asteroids, uh, there's, there, you know, every few years, some, 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 some asteroid is, is passing Earth and, 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 and at some point, point of time you will be able to mine the asteroid and there will be so so many millions of tons in there and so but this is this is in my my view pretty pretty ridiculous at, at this point in time um what about i mean let's not, let's not go into space but what about the the oceans i mean could i mean there i've heard so many i don't know experts say you know if we if we have the technological innovation we could you know, dig much deeper or whatever, go into the surface of the oceans. Yeah, this is also something I hear a lot and also read into this topic a little bit. Um, so it, it is actually a fact that in, in, um, in the oceans, there are like sporadic elements of gold. Um, so if you to, to, to go, if you would be, would have, would be able to, 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 to somehow extract these, these tiny, tiny 
elements of gold within the oceans. I don't know how, how, how much gold it is. Uh, the thing, the funny thing about that is this, this story is actually uh, around for, for more than 100 years. So actually um, during, or I think during the hyperinflation in Germany, the, there was a scammer who said, okay, I know how to basically get us out of this melee and I, I, I'm able to extract the, the gold out of, out of the sea. Give me a lot of money and I will do it for you. Obviously, he wasn't able to do it. So, so this is, it's, it's, even if you go back further, it's like, it's like alchemy, you know, alchemy was basically the idea to, 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 to make, make uh, gold uh, from uh, what's it called? Plum, 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 plumbum, I think it's called, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not quite sure, but so, so you make, make gold out of a non um, monetary metal, but it, it never, it basically never was, uh, nobody succeeded with doing it only uh central banking actually was able to make make kind of gold uh, at least uh, let's say um, money out of the currency out of nothing and and they were actually the, the only ones who were achieved what alchemy failed to achieve uh, to to increase the, the gold supply by by gold substitutes because that's what they're actually doing Right, right. So you okay? You mentioned central banks in your presentation. You you went into pretty much detail. You know how much, how many tons the central banks have been accumulating, especially Russia and China too, or you know a, a list of a, a, you know of countries. Is is it is there some truth to that? Because there's some experts saying that China actually holds much more gold than they admit. Uh, is it just a rumor, or do they really have I don't know twenty twenty one thousand tons of of, of gold or is it just a you know a stupid rumor well w what is factual is that um uh china had hasn't been very transparent in reporting the gold uh allocation so gold holdings you can see that very well by like uh, in the official data of the imf for instance um russia uh reports on a monthly basis their, their gold holdings um, and, and, and China also does so. I mean, I think they, they had to be, get the, become a little bit more transparent uh, in, in, in the past years. But, but still, they, you, you, from time to time, they announce like a huge increase of their gold supply, which, which they couldn't have just like uh, received within the last month. It's like the doubling of, of the gold supply. Uh, so so that's, that, that's a, a, a quite a good indication that they perhaps uh, don't uh, actually report everything. Um, but obviously I, I can't prove it to you or to anybody that they have way more. I, I, I know these rumors and I think it's quite realistic that they are understating their, their gold holdings. Um, but but, but, but I, I couldn't prove it to you, as I said. Mm -hmm. What does it mean for the price of gold? Let's say, I mean, we know it's, you know, it's an open secret. The gold price has been and is being manipulated. Uh, do you want to comment on that? Like, what, what is uh, what does it mean for? I mean, could could the central banks or you know just uh, they even I think was it Bernanke or uh, former some chairman of, of the Federal Reserve said, well, we could just lease it and then you know uh, if the if the price of gold should go up, uh, you know we could just lease it out or, or or sell it or something and then you know so you can dump the price. How much truth is that to that? I mean how. Well, also, I, I researched in, into this pretty pretty closely, and you're right. It, uh, I mean, I, I, personally, I'm there, there are like different kind of um, uh, different versions of this kind of conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. um, there are like camps who who, who say like that, that the price is complete bogus, and at one point uh, it will explode. Uh, I don't know. 10, 20 X to the upside because uh, they can't s suppress it anymore. Uh, I, I don't buy this version personally. Um, but what you said is uh, that there is leasing going out and generally manipulation of prices. I mean, that's also to me quite, quite realistic because you, you again, look at history, for instance, when Bretton Woods fell apart, uh, before that, actually, uh, there was this this gold fixing, which where the gold price was uh, fixed uh, with one ounce of gold was uh, thirty five dollars, um, and 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 since since the U.S. were were too loose with their monetary policy and so on, um, 
they couldn't basically hold this price. But before before they admitted that they can't hold this price, they try they tried to keep it down. You know, that was the London Gold Pool and so on. So 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 that was going on back then. That's a fact. And what and in the in the more recent history, what you refer to, I think it, it was Ellen, under Ellen Greenspan. Mm -hmm. That is actually you can you can read that still in the transcript. I think it was in August 1993, uh, where the Fed transcript is also still available. That exactly this discussion was going on because the gold price was rising again during that time. I think from 300 to to 400 dollars, some uh, and signaling inflation. And, and they didn't like that because they wanted to, to keep interest rates low because the, the economy wasn't going well. So, so that, that, that idea came up, why exactly what you said, why shouldn't we lease out some gold and, 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 and suppress the price? Um, so what I can imagine is happening in times of stress, in times of financial stress, for instance, like in, in, in uh, financial crisis 2008, obviously if, 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 if you have a big panic and then the gold price spikes, that's not in the interest of, 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 of the system. So that, that, they are, that there is some kind of consorted actions during these times I can imagine, but I, 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 I'm, I can't imagine that you really can suppress the gold price structurally um, uh, in, in a severe manner. So you can, I think, that's basically not my view. I mean, that's basically, I think, also uh, the work of, of, of people like Dimitri Speck, who, who, who wrote a book about that, the gold cartel, uh, who, who, who also did a lot of statistical analysis um, where he an analyzed the intraday prices of gold. So, so there are quite a few um, uh, there are things that point to to some some kind of mingling uh, at, at at times, but but not like every day kind of you know. So, so that's a little bit my, my my view. I think it would be naive to say no. There is zero manipulation going on because again, what is is the job of a central bank? I mean, it's price fixing of interest rates in, 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 in the first place. So, so, so if, and also uh, foreign exchange rates. So this is basically permanent uh, interventionism, uh, institutionalized interventionism. So, so why, why should, should you stop, stop here and, and, and shouldn't also uh, intervene in, in, in the gold price at times? That's, that's not so far-fetched for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, what would be a realistic price? Because um, there's a you know a lot of people saying uh, you know the price could easily go now to especially if, during this uh, this crisis or you know trillions being printed and you know quantitative easing, negative rate interest policies. So all these you know factors playing out. Where do you see the gold price realistically? Uh, <sighs> Well, in five years or so. yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it depends. It's a move. It's a moving target. It depends, as you said, uh, on, on on all the monetary action which which already has been taken and which is going to take place. So, the way I view it generally uh, is in a in a fiat money system as we have it today. You have like gold on the sidelines. It's available. You can kind of put put some capital or all your capital, whatever you could. You can put it in there. Um, but as long as, as the trust basically in the system is, is, is here, it may be kind of undervalued. It doesn't have, it doesn't have this m monetary um, view. It's not viewed as a, as a monetary asset, at least not by, by the majority of market participants. And, 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 and the big upside for gold is if this view is taken again, because, I don't know, because it potentially does uh, gain a, 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 a place in, 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 the, in, the, in the global financial system again, because, for instance, China and Russia team up and say, okay, we, 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 we start some kind of a, a currency exchange mechanism, which is at least with the trading they doing on an international level based on gold. Um, so it's a partial gold standard that you talked about, right? I mean... Would you, is it realistic in, from your perspective, like a sort of a gold standard, like a gold backed currency? Is that what maybe some nations are 
uh, dreaming about or <laughs> or planning no, like to possibly. circumvent the US dollar or the SWIFT or you know all these mechanisms? I think one has to distinguish if you say gold standard what what comes to my mind I mean that's again also very mm -hmm. murky definition because we had all kind of different gold standards during during the history of time but but if you if you if you mean uh, like uh, currency which is under gold as a circulating currency definitely that's i think not the plan of any any nation also not like a uh, currency which is backed by a fixed amount of gold why don't i think that because i think uh, uh governments always have the tendency they want to spend they want to be able to spend they don't want to have any restriction uh, for the spending and that's why there's this kind of uh, natural collusion or synergy between banking let's call it banking and state uh, if, 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 if the banking sector and, and, and central banking commercial banking all together with with the f legal framework of the state together uh, provides the state the uh, the tools basically to to cro to to structurally be able to overspend that, that that that's 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 very that's very good for for the state it doesn't even matter if if you have like a, a totalitarian um government or if you have a democratic government because even the democratic government has the tendency to vote the people in who who promise the most for nothing basically so 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 that can't work and they you need to finance it and and, and one way to finance it is 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 to to print so so I think it's it's definitely not in any interest of 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 of, of uh, general countries to 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 reinstate uh, a really a gold backed uh, uh, currency, but but what I alluded to previously was was as I said just like on an international uh, settlement basis that that would be already uh, be quite quite um, perhaps on the geopolitical um, from a geopolitical political standpoint be very interesting for for players like russia and and china because if you if you can circumvent the dollar which they are already they've been doing this more and more since since the last uh, five years or so um then then the demand for for dollars structurally drops and 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 this basically this this game which was is is has been going on since since almost 50 years since the end of Bretton Woods uh, would would at the end of the day stop. So 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 that I think would be partial potentially be a partial motivation to 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 start increasing the, the your, your your hoard of gold as as as, uh, as a sovereign nation. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, let me uh, let's wrap this up, um, Mark. Uh, by I just want to ask you uh, tie tie in uh, two questions together. Like, uh, first of all, you interact with clients. So, do you have uh, do you do you experience like more and more of your clients or the people you're interacting with that they are now shifting more of or s maybe even selling some of the gold and putting it into Bitcoin. And uh, what is your overall assessment of this, you know, of today's, of, of the situation that we are in right now, you know, with this whole Corona pandemic uh, and, and uh, unemployment rising and, you know, we're probably going, you know, from recession probably to stagflation dep or depression and, and, and eventually even inflation. I mean, where do you see this going? Like sort of a bigger picture in context of gold and Bitcoin. Okay, well, uh, question number one. Um... In my experience, um, also this is like, I mean, we deal with more traditional clients, let's say, um, not within like the realm of, of the crypto slash Bitcoin universe. And, and still today, I mean, yes, the average knowledge is a little bit increasing and, and you find people also within like the asset management sector or from some wealth managers or family offices who, who are quite knowledge, knowledgeable at times, but, but, but generally speaking, these are, these are only like single individuals and, and, and it's, it's, it's not like enough that like big institutions have any kind of majority to, 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 to really uh, re, uh, allocate capital into, into the sector. Because because of a lot of different, I mean, I wrote, I wrote an article on that. Uh, I think a few, few, uh, a few reasons for that 
Um, one is not, as I said, uh, the lack of general know-how within the industry, but also which by now could be, I think, uh, already uh, not the main driver anymore, but still to some extent uh, regulatory uncertainty. Um, a, a third one, I think, which is, is also very difficult for the, for the general asset management community is the high volatility. They're not used to deal with, with assets which have such a high volatility um, and their clients aren't either. So, 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 so there also with, with that also comes some kind of re reluctancy to, to, to allocate capital into, into this kind of asset class. Um, so, so, so these are a few, a few, few reasons why it still, I think, is taking time. But uh, in my experience, the smaller kind of the entity, the higher the probability of, of, of some kind of allocation towards Bitcoin. I mean, it starts typically with, I'd say, family offices slash small uh, wealth managers because they are more flexible and more open to, to that idea if, if they have if they happen to have people sitting in their boards who, who, who are interested in, in into that, um, it, it, it perhaps will, will continue to go slowly into traditional asset management, but we are still, I think, a few steps away from that. And, and, and perhaps only at the very uh, end of the chain, there will be uh, the big institutions and the big pools of capital, which are pension funds and, and insurance companies and so on, because these are the most bureaucratic organizations and they, you need to convince the most people in, in, in there. And, and so, yeah, you also have uh, that I, I forgot to mention, but you also have this um, age, age gap. Some, sometimes you have, I mean, the people, in charge are usually 50 plus and i think you have like this this kind of division somewhere between 40 and and, and 50 if you're below 40 you're generally much more open to the topic um if you if you're older than 50 it, it, it oftentimes gets gets complicated so so that's also something which which naturally also will will basically uh uh so, so the people, the younger people, will get into charge more and more. But, but, but for now, this is this is still not. We're not there yet, if you ask me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second part part of the question was also quite a big uh, question. Well, assessment of the current situation. So many moving, um, moving targets. I mean, I learned to become more humble. Uh, so I think uh nothing is certain but 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 what i do think is is pretty obvious by now uh, obviously i mean this is even the imf saying this now at this point in time uh, we are going into a, a recession into a global recession even um question is of, of course how, how long will, will this recession last and will it only be is it only kind of because of because of this shutdown and lockdown and all this severe measurements which which have been taken i'm of the opinion um well obviously that's that's the trigger but uh but but we had a very uh, uh, already a very skewed economy going into this whole thing so i'm of the opinion that this this is uh probably uh the trigger for 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 some 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 much longer lasting effects um what is very i think crucial and perhaps the, the most important question uh, is does that matter so the, we have been experiencing also an, an, on a global scale at least an, an exponential um, increase of, of debt not, not perhaps only public debt but but like in, in aggregate and and the question is how, how much debt can 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 one load up to the system and that's a very difficult question. I mean, um, uh, but I think we we have the chance, or basically the misfortunate uh, chance is is here that at least during this decade, uh, the, these debt limits will be reached. These debts cannot be uh, ex uh, maintained, and 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 even um, more and more debt cannot be. Um, put up to the existing debt load and and this is i think uh, uh, 
something that 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 again this crisis will will perhaps um, um, is that that's a catalyst for 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 this moment to 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 come come sooner than later because the amount of debt which is now going to be piled up as a consequence of of all this that that's that's mind blowing that's really mm -hmm. mind blowing so a lot of people from the traditional uh, finance industry by now uh, like take have have the view about that doesn't matter to look at japan a lot of um critics have been saying well japan uh, it has so much debt it, 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 it it's just not sustainable and and and, and this is going been said since since 10 20 years and and and, and still they they are doing I, I wouldn't say they're doing well but still they are they're coping somehow um uh, I, I think japan is is a very uh is a very special case because japan this problem started at the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s. And, and it's always a question, not many people talk about that side of the equation. You, you have debt and you also, as an economy, have assets. So I think Japan had, had, had and still has a hell of a lot of assets next mm -hmm. to debt because it's a highly industri industrialized uh, economy and it definitely was in a very good starting points so 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 i don't think personally for instance that if you take the eu uh, or the us for that matter as uh, that these two economies have that much capacity because neither the eu as a whole has has that much capital on on, on, on to to basically uh, where you can actually uh, put that on on top of it and and also not the us uh, so so I, I would say i don't know that the limits of of i mean this is a very difficult question but the limits of uh, of debt sustainability in in the us and the eu are somewhere between 150 and 200% debt to gdp we are not there yet, uh, but 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 we are increasingly getting closer. Especially, as I said, I mean, I did some rough ca calculations for for the US. Uh, if if you you had I think one hundred six percent debt to GDP last year, if you if you have like now, you can you can you can change the numbers. But if you assume five or ten percent recession, and if you have uh, a debt increase of of uh, three trillion dollars a year or six trillion dollars a year if you take this kind of parameters you land somewhere between 127 and 156 percent debt to gdp um and that, that, that that's in one year so so that's not now things are moving fast you know so so that's something I'm, I'm i'm watching very closely and i think a lot of people were lulled into kind of a uh false sense of security or just think okay these debt levels can be maintained forever the central banks just prints up the the money and and there will not be no consequences and perhaps at the end of the day the central bank cancels all the debt i don't believe that at all you, that that would be kind of like uh, uh if if you could do that then you 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 would be able to basically uh, nobody would have to work at the end of the day. You could go into right. debt forever, print the money, and with no consequences, it will not work like that. So, do you, so do you see? Besides, uh, I mean, because it's really, I mean, it's really frightening. I mean, when when once uh, you know it's understood what kind of debt expansion, or you know, as you also you know tweet much about it about the debt debt expansion. Um, I mean, what, what's the worst case scenario? I mean, are we going to see beyond bailouts like bail-in or negative rates interest and, you know, bail-in of deposit and REIT uh, accounts or like in Cyprus, it's not, you know, I mean, it's it, it's not so many years, uh, uh, so many years ago. It's like 2013, 2014. I mean, are we going to see like, uh, like an exponential of these cases? Well, everything is on the table, I think. I mean, uh, the, the, the system wants to kind of survive and perpetuate itself as long as possible. So, so everything will, will, will be tried. I mean, when you talk about bail-ins, yes, they said this kind of slogan in the EU, 
bailouts are out and bail-ins are in. Um, uh, but on the other hand, I think from a political point of view, bailing in a, a large amount of the electorate isn't 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 really uh, doing you good. So so I think they will try to avoid this as, 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 as good as possible. So, so politically speaking, inflation is always the, the easiest way out, but it is no way out in reality. But it's 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 a, a way to postpone the pain, perhaps for for one day more and one day more. <laughs> but but then there, there there comes a point of no return. It it could come at least and and and. The more you do this trick, the more money inflation you already did to monetize debt, the more difficult it gets to actually stop it, you know. So so I still have a little bit of difficulty to, to really imagine uh, th that like, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the European Union or, or the US goes in a full-blown hyperinflation. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, if I see the trajectory, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I mean, something has to give. So uh, if there is a, a debt jubilee that's also came up recently more and more often, uh, I think people don't really think this through. What does it mean? I mean, it's, it's, it's at the end of the day, everybody is, is involved because if, if, if you, if you say, okay, sorry guys, my, my debt isn't worth anything anymore. Who's the holder of the debt? It's again insurance company, pensions funds, and then the public again is hit. You know, so so it's 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 not like you you can't spare spare them from from pain. Uh, so so it's, it's not going to be painless. But what's the process then? Of you know, is it going to be gradual and suddenly, or is it going to be sort of you know in phases going through? This is something which I often think about. I mean for people like even you know people on the streets what are they going to do i mean just look at the unemployment numbers in the united states and the insolvency of the german banks you know all these factors <laughs> if you you know if you just zoom out and look at all these factors playing out it's it's pretty frightening i mean well i, I mean one scenario also there are a lot of questions attached to this but just i throw throw this to you so one scenario could, could be, and that's actually, in my view, at least, basically how, how, how Keynes became so influential. I mean, Keynes is often bashed by, 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 by people from the Austrian scene and so on, and, and I'm not a huge fan of Keynes, but, but, but he had some points also, good points, from a practical point of view, um, insofar that he, he realized that, um, that back then, the, uh, in the in the 20s that was the the, the gold price of of the uk was basically uh too low relative to to the money which was going around the uk did did, did uh, a big mistake after world war one uh they, they left the, the the classical gold standards as as did except the us or all, all all countries basically to print the money to to finance the war and 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 uh, they wanted to go back to the gold standard, and they did so in twenty in, in nineteen twenty five. But but they didn't account for for the, all the additional money they had printed in the meantime, and they they they, they wanted to peg it with the same pre war ratio, and that that led to huge deflation because um, if if you want to peg a, a bigger amount of money to to the same amount of gold with the same price, uh, that doesn't work. So. So, so, so he, and that didn't work because he already back then had unions and so on. This would have caused deflation and it did co cause deflation. And, and then you, you need to take people money, nominally money away from them. Uh, and that, that's politically not feasible. So he, I think basically what he said, okay, guys, you can't take these people, uh, anything away. To inflate it, you know. I mean, it's, it has the same effect, but it's just not. You basically trick the people, and 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 then you 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 come to to a sensible uh, relationship again, and that's something on a grand scale, which also basically could happen. So, um, say for instance, central banks buy a lot of gold uh, in the anticipation uh, of. There be there will be a big revaluation of, of of the gold supply, 
which which then also as a consequence will have price inflation but at least at the debt uh, levels relative to the nominal gdp and that's what's important um is, is can be feasible again and can mm-hmm. can be sustainable again and that's where we also write a lot about in in our gold stand, uh, in our gold report these kind of monetary uh, relationships and i also said this previously in, in, in our uh, in our conversation, if if gold is viewed as a monetary asset again, and and if these kind of relationships get relevant again, and right now it's it's not. It's just on the sideways here uh, and, and sitting there and, and, and waiting and doing nothing, at least for the international system. But if the ish, international system decides, okay, guys, we have to reevaluate gold, and we reevaluate it, for instance, um, I don't know, to say. Ten thousand or seven thousand dollars, something like that. Um, things things could look much better, much more sustainable again from from a debt to GDP point of view. Mm-hmm. Got it. Um, so, Mark, um, before we wrap up, I just wanted to ask you a last question. I mean, um, as you said also in your presentation, uh, the. Bitcoin's market capitalization or market volume is is really a smallest fraction of gold. Uh, gold is about what 10, 11 trillion. Right. So, um, and Bitcoin is whatever 100, 150 billion. Um, could it be? I mean, it could, do you think it's realistic, feasible that it it reaches a trillion market cap like uh, gradually and suddenly, and then it becomes really uh, even? Even, not even for mainstream, but especially for institutional, for family offices, ultra net uh, rich people, uh, or you know just people um, more interesting, and and then people, and then it would just you know be a, uh, automatic uh, like you know exponential uh, uh, factor. Well, I I don't think that the, I mean yes, market cap is is relevant to some extent, of course, but I think it's not the main. The main factor, I think the main factor, uh, as long as Bitcoin is like gold right now on the sidelines as potential option to, to put some capital in, in there, uh, the main factor is, is the volatility. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and uh, it doesn't matter if it's uh, 10 times as big as, as now, if it's as volatile as now, uh, this scares a lot of people. And, and, and that's also, I talked about this uh, also in, in, in this talk that's that's something what we again also from our practical side want to solve a, a little bit for, for for investors and 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 this message i'm trying to hammer home um it doesn't matter that it's so volatile but you can uh, from an asset management point of view you can ma- you can handle that you can handle it obviously in in, in position sizing your position that's nothing new but 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 that even that scares professional in investors too because they are scared of the drawdown of every single position they can't tell their clients we've got a position in here what's which has a drawdown of 70 80 percent um they, they are slaughtered by 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 their by by their uh, clients um, but, but what you can do is, you, and that's what we also offer in, in one of our strategies, what you can do is you can combine it with a, a, a less volatile asset. We take gold because we think it's, it matches very well and, and then rebalance. So, so you always basically sell into strengths and buy into uh, weakness on, on a very uh, systematic, uh, in a systematic way. And by that, you can actually take the volatility which is a problem for a lot of people which is psychologically a problem because of the the, the, the behavioral finance problems which comes with with that oftentimes you can take that volatility and and make an advantage uh, to yourself and uh and and and, and um, buy low and sell high and and have an overall um risk return um characteristic of of of, of one building block in your portfolio which you can handle and which also your your clients can handle and that's our solution that's also i mean i tweet about this publicly uh, this this is no magic formula you, you can do this personally theoretically also pretty easily you just have to do it you just really have to stick to this strategy uh I don't know, whatever is in your risk parameter, take 10%, 25% Bitcoin and 75% something else, gold, for instance, and, and, and rebalance. If Bitcoin doubles, take the profits and put, put, in, put in gold. And if, if Bitcoin halves, 
put in some gold from from that side. So so you will always be anticyclically, and you will have a little bit better or significant better returns uh, as if you wouldn't rebalance, and you can uh, you will be able to stomach the, the the overall volatility. I see. Well, you see, I mean, Bitcoin space. We see, we say that uh, the, um, the volatility is actually a feature, not a bug, and because of the monetary evolution, I mean, we are you know. 10, 11 years into Bitcoin, and it's, uh, do, I mean, would it be fair to say that the volatility is part of the of the price formation or of the, you know, of the network effect or the network effects actually condition for, you know, in order to become someday in the future, you know, in the years to come or maybe even decades to come, you know, sort of a some, someday it's going to be, it's going to stabilize. Uh, I thought about this question a lot, uh, also coming from my gold background. I think the analogy here once more is interesting if you take gold. Uh, gold wasn't volatile until the, the year 1971. Why? Because it was officially the unit of account. So if, 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 if I don't know, the world or at least a part of the world would agree that we now, everybody uh, make Bitcoin as unit of account, there is no volatility because then you, by definition, um, measure everything in in satoshis, right? So so that would be that would be the way to 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 eliminate volatility. That but but the question is how do you arrive at this point? And and that's a very interesting and also difficult question. I mean, I I think from the practical point of view, it it, it will take a, a huge huge problem, a huge crisis uh, for for such a scenario to play out, which may happen but if if it doesn't play out or for the time being and it's 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 not in sight yet at least i i can't see it in front of the doorstep yet at least um one one, one needs to treat it a little bit like 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 gold actually also um and as but but then and this is also perhaps a very interesting point. We wrote about this in, in our book uh, 2014 already. And I think till today, this is very um, neglected or not overlooked by the community. The difference between gold and Bitcoin is uh, gold has non-monetary um, 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 utilities. So by, by having a non-monetary uh, values and, and utilities, you have a, a, a buffer for the volatility. Why is that? Because for instance, say the, the gold price rises extremely, you have the scrap gold market and uh, suddenly the incentive of, of the non-monetary gold is very high to be, to be re-monetized basically, you know? So some old jewelry or some old, I don't know, a piece of art or whatever uh, is, is, already, is, 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 is dug out somewhere and is, is going to, to be offered to the market via the scrap market. And on the other hand, um, uh, jewelry, the, the jewelry demand, India is the biggest um, um, consumer of, of gold. Uh, the jewelry demand will be subs uh, subsidized, uh, yeah, um, substituted. Sorry, so 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 there will be less gold purchased for 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 the weddings, but 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 more silver or other other, other things, you know. So 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 you have a counter cyclic, um, a, a very counter cyclic mechanism built in in into this, and this is only possible because there's a non-monetary um, value, and there are actually a lot of non-monetary um, functions for gold. Gold is a brilliant metal. It oftentimes is is is, is overseen that the the, proper, the physical properties of gold would be highly better for for I don't know for electronics and Electronic, so on. Right. Uh, they are substituted by 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 lesser quality metals just because the monetary um, value for 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 the society in general is is much higher. But but if if if, if nobody if, if everybody throws uh, throws away the gold bars, uh, the industry would suck it also up. So so you have this is kind of a this buffers your your volatility in the long time. Bitcoin doesn't have that. It only has the monetary demand. Mm -hmm. There are some people who claim that is an advantage. I think that could be advantage when we get to the point that that we say okay, this is now a, a unit of account. But, but until we are there, I think it will stay more volatile than much more volatile than gold. And, and, and again, therefore, I think this, this, 
the strategy from an investment point of view is 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 pretty certain to to work for for the time being you know so so take make make the best of it and 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 rebalance and uh and and and, and sell 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 high and buy low that's that's my advice all right okay well I really enjoyed our talk mark um do you have any final closing thoughts on on bitcoin like where do you see bitcoin in in 10 years to come what, what why bitcoin why, what would you say to a noob you know why would why should they you know start understanding bitcoin buying bitcoin well when i bought my first bitcoins uh luckily a few years ago already uh, um i thought well this is a new technology and why should and, and there wasn't anything else around back then yet and, and 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 i'm sure there will be something new coming up and why should this first thing be kind of the best you know technology evolves so fast and and until today i actually think that basically potentially the competition of of, of some rival is is the biggest risk I, I i think so but i think the risk since since back then actually came down significantly because it is it is well established and it is also i think this is all overlooked quite often it is not a, a completely sta static thing i mean it is always challenged with with competition with through through potential forks and so on so so it's 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 not that it didn't uh, uh, evolve in any kind of or, 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 or matter but it has a, a very high bar to 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 have to undergo any changes but it is possible and it it, it already ha did happen so so i think this 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 constant competition with other cryptocurrencies made it so robust made it even more robust over the years and and also the fact that that so many very bright and smart people are actually working on that this is actually also very it's a qualitative argument but i think it's an important one a lot of human capital is is, is going into this and wants this thing to, to work so so that's something i think is is is, is quite um likely to to enhance the chances that it in 10 years will not only still be here but it will will have thrived um very well from from this point on okay one final question do you see uh, do you think it's it's possible that bitcoin in whatever time frame 20, 20 30 years could become really the the standard the uh, stored of value medium of exchange yeah. unit of account uh, settlement layer global settlement layer is everything yeah of course of course I think it's 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 very possible. Um, I mean, if it's if it's going to be the medium of exchange, well, obviously this thing is good. this 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 scalability topic is has been going on for for for, for a long time, and it's still, to my uh, knowledge, to, in my view, hasn't been solved in any significant way. It doesn't have to be necessarily. I mean, I go. Uh, with uh, Saif, uh, basically there could be kind of a Bitcoin standard. I thought about this also before he wrote about that already. But I, I, I think it, what potential a potential scenario um, could be that that some central bank starts buying it. I mean, yeah. it's not so. Yeah. It's not. But once it's, once once that happens, even if it's just uh, one one tiny central right. bank somewhere, right. this could just boost. I mean, it's, exactly. Uh, a chain reaction right exactly so i think that's the most perhaps the most realistic scenario in in, in apart from a mm -hmm. total mad max global hyperinflation scenario um which i don't see yet at least hopefully we won't we won't have to go through such a thing um but that's that's i think quite a quite a possible scenario where where this starts a chain reaction and and then it is basically kind of yeah it's basically kind of a bitcoin standard i mean it will it, it will not be i think it will not be circulating money i mean that that i don't think but i mean you, the beauty of the thing is you can you can opt in very easily and and and, and perhaps there will be some kind of uh um hybrid system where where, where the state still have 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 their a, a way to to do their inflation game and so on um but but it's yeah but but it, it definitely is, is is a good thing that it's out there because it's some kind of a a, 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 a way to opt out of, of, of this whole 
this whole thing. Opt out, exactly. Sort of a breakaway civilization, as I always say. But, you know, who knows what's going to happen. So, so Mark, uh, want to tell my listeners where they can find you? Any other resources, links? I'm going to put your, your YouTube uh, video, by the way, your presentation into, into the show notes too, because it's really valuable. Uh, anything else? Well, um, for people who are on Twitter, they can follow my Twitter handle, which is Mark Valek. Um, company site is incrementum.li and I mentioned the In Gold We Trust report um, that's available for free on uh, In Gold We Trust dot report so you can subscribe there and you will get uh, the report um, May 27th Beautiful, thank you so much Mark thank you for thank your time you. and hope to see you soon again very in the future, okay Take care Kevin, thanks Thank you, bye Mark well, what do you think about that? That was really, I, I think, you know, Mark is really one of the most knowledgeable people uh, when it comes to, you know, gold and Bitcoin. He's not, you know, one of those Peter Schiff guys, you know, he's like, oh, anti-Bitcoin, but he's really, he understands, he comprehends the, the potential, the, the, the real value proposition, the, the soundness of, of Bitcoin and you know, he, he understands really the full potential, the total potential of it. So yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know your questions. Any other you know guests I should bring on? Uh, maybe on a maybe in, uh, in a in a panel discussion, uh, possibly even together with with Mark Valak. Uh, follow him on Twitter. Make sure uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, leave me a positive review if you can, and give it a you know retweet it, reshare it, love it, like it, whatever you do. Thank you so much for supporting for listening. My name is Kevin Davani. I'm the Total Connector. You can find me on thetotalconnector.com. My email address is hello at thetotalconnector.com. And my other uh, podcast uh, website is kevandavani.com slash podcast. It's all in the show notes. Thank you again so much for listening, for your support. And I hope to, um, yeah, uh, hear from you soon. All right.